Confidence Man, The Making of Donald Trump and the Breaking of America is a book by Maggie Haberman, which was published in 2022. The book covers the life and presidency of Donald Trump, with a focus on his rise to power in the 1970s and 1980s New York City. Haberman examines Trump's connections to the city's demimonde, including hustlers, mobsters, political bosses, and media figures. The author also delves into Trump's relationships with key figures of the era, such as Ed Koch, George Steinbrenner, Roger Stone, Rupert Murdoch, Roger Ailes, Rudy Giuliani, Robert Morgenthau, and his mentor, Roy Cohn. Haberman also examines how Trump used the media to shape his public image, specifically during his divorce from Ivana, by garnering coverage from gossip columnists. In the book, Haberman presents a picture of Trump as president as a childlike figure easily influenced by flattery, obsessed with trivialities, unwilling to engage with the details, and dismissive of advice. Haberman argues that the executive branch was subject to the president's whims and moods, his ideas about friends and enemies, and that he reoriented an entire country to react to his moods and emotions. The author concludes that Trump is a narcissistic drama seeker who covered a fragile ego with a bullying impulse. The ex-apparent president's flushing job first came to light on Thursday morning as New York Times White House journalist Maggie Haberman discussed her soon-to-be-released book, Confidence Man, on CNN. Donald Trump's Rise to Power and the Dissolution of America The White House staff would frequently discover the toilet clogged, according to Haberman, a CNN political analyst. The engineer would have to come and fix it, and what he or she would find would be wads of, you know, clumped up wet printed paper, indicating that it was not waste paper, the speaker said. This was either notes or some other piece of paper that they think he threw down the toilet. Berman continued, but it certainly adds, as you said, another dimension to what we know about how he handled things in the White House. He added that it may be anyone's guess as to what the papers were. Then Politico reporter Annie Carney broke the story that White House staff glued together documents that Trump had ripped up for archival purposes in 2018. The way he handled documents throughout his life was by rolling them up, but this time is different. Haberman said. And that wasn't an isolated incidence, as I had been told. On Thursday morning, Trump responded to Haberman whose story he had been constantly following while working. Another false claim that I flushed papers and documents down a White House toilet is categorically false, according to Trump, and was merely made up by a reporter in order to gain attention for a mostly fictional book. Three days after National Archives and Records Administration, NARA, officials revealed that they had recovered 15 boxes of documents from Trump's Mar-a-Lago residence that were supposed to have been given to the agency when he left the White House, the new records allegations surfaced. The Justice Department was requested by the Archives to look into how Trump handled the records on Wednesday, and federal law enforcement officials reportedly discussed whether they should investigate him for a potential crime. The House Committee on Oversight and Reform has also begun an investigation into whether Trump took the 15 boxes of documents that Archives officials returned last month. The committee's chairperson, Carly Maloney, stated on Thursday, I am profoundly concerned that these records were not provided to NARA promptly at the end of the Trump administration and that they appear to have been removed from the White House in violation of the Presidential Records Act, PRA. I am further concerned by recent reports that President Trump repeatedly attempted to destroy presidential records while in office, which could constitute additional major PRA violations, the author writes. Trump, though, insisted that he worked with the archives to return the crates to the agency. Following cooperative and respectful discussions, President Trump stated, the National Archives and Records Administration, NARA, freely and voluntarily arranged with him for the transportation of boxes containing letters, records, newspapers, magazines, and other articles. Some of this information will be shown sometime in the Donald J. Trump Presidential Library for the general public to see my administration's amazing accomplishments for the American people. At her soon-to-be-released book, Confidence Man, The Making of Donald Trump and the Breaking of America, New York Times reporter Maggie Haberman claims that former resident Donald Trump may have disposed of documents by flushing them down the toilet in the White House residence. 
I discovered that staff at the White House residence would occasionally discover the toilet clogged. The engineer would then need to come and fix it. And what the engineer would typically find would be wads of, you know, wet, printed paper, meaning that it wasn't desk paper. Instead, this was either a message or another piece of paper that they believed he had thrown down the desk, Haberman said during an appearance on CNN on Thursday morning. What it might be, Brenda, is anyone's guess. It might be posts, it might be notes he wrote to himself, it might be other things, Haberman added. As you said, it definitely adds another dimension to what we know about how he handled material in the White House. The charges were swiftly refuted by Trump. The former president issued a statement saying, another phony tale, that I flushed papers and documents down a White House toilet, is categorically untrue and is just made up by a reporter in order to garner publicity for a mostly fictional book. The Democratic Party is merely using this and the unelected Committee on Political Hacks as a showcase for how horribly our country is faring under the rule of the Biden administration. Trump has been accused of handling presidential records pertaining to his official duties, possibly in violation of the Presidential Records Act. Haberman's report comes as the January 6 committee continues its inquiry into the Capitol riot, demanding testimony and materials from witnesses to ascertain the degree of their role in jeopardizing the validity of the 2020 election results. Haberman, who gained notoriety for her coverage of Trump over the past seven years, claimed she was unaware of the precise frequency of an event. The toll system would need to be unlocked by an engineer, who said that this happened periodically. She claimed that the clogged papers were most likely from Trump's personal bathroom in the White House. The report also stated that she was unsure of his possible motivation. What the engineer would discover would be bundles of clumped up wet printed paper, indicating that it wasn't waste paper. They believed he had thrown some kind of paper or notes down the toaster. What it could be, it could be anyone's guess Haberman claimed to have made the discovery while conducting research for her upcoming book, Confidence Man, Donald Trump's Making and the Breaking of America, scheduled for publication on October 4. The book apparently chronicles Trump's biography from his formative years in New York to his time in the White House and presidency in Florida. Trump has drawn criticism for his record-keeping during his days in the White House. According to Politico, he had a history of paper-stealing habits that made staff members track his paper trail and piece important documents back together in order to comply with the 1978 Presidential Records Act. In mid-January, the National Archives and Records Administration recovered approximately 15 boxes of documents from Trump and reportedly requested that the Justice Department look into how he handled White House records. According to the Washington Post, some of the materials Trump briefly held on to after his time in the White House included letters from former President Barack Obama and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The memos were not retained for unknown reasons, according to his advisors, and the site also reported that previous President Bill Clinton had to return documents to the NARA after his White House exit. In a statement that was released on Monday, Trump criticized how the media had described his relationship with the NARA. My association with NARA is described by the media as fake news. It was completely the opposite. Working with NARA to formally preserve the Trump legacy was a huge honor he made a declaration. The papers were provided easily, without conflict, and on a very friendly basis, which differs from the accounts being written up by the fake news media. In actuality, it was perceived as regular and no big deal. Actually, I've been informed that I was under no obligation to provide this material due to numerous legal rulings that have been made throughout the years. This was the summary of the book Confidence Man. I hope you're having a great day. I just wanted to take a moment to express my gratitude for your support on our channel. Your engagement and feedback are invaluable to us and we are so glad that you are enjoying our book summaries. We are committed to providing you with the most comprehensive and concise summaries of the best books out there, and we upload new videos daily so you can stay informed on the latest literature. If you enjoyed this video, please help us spread the word by hitting the like button and sharing it with your friends and book clubs. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be the first to know when we post new summaries. Thank you again for your support, and we look forward to sharing more great books with you. Happy reading!